Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and in this episode we will learn about return types and overloads of methods. In the last episode we learned how to write and execute our very own methods, but there are a lot more options that we have with them. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to teach you today is the return type. Whenever we call a method we can compute some values and store the final result into a variable. We can then take that variable and return it to the caller of the method. Let me give you an example. Let's take our add method from last time. As you can see here, the return type is void. This means no value will be returned to the caller, the caller being our main method, because that is the place where we actually call the method, where we execute it. So let's say, instead of printing out the result in the method, we want to keep this value that we've computed in here and do some more stuff with it in our main method. So let's just go ahead and return result. Now at this point we are getting an error. Void methods cannot return a value. So every time we write a method we have to specifically think about its job. We now want this method to return an int value because our result is an integer. So instead of saying that the return type is void we need to change it to integer. And voila, the error is gone. Now this is all well and good, but if we were to execute our program now, nothing would happen. When we call our add method, we get an integer value, but we never store this value. So once it gets returned, it has no place to go and therefore gets destroyed. So let's create a variable to store our value. Now the result is stored within C and we can perform more operations on it from our main method. Now I'm just going to print it out to show you that this actually works. And if I run the program now, we get our 15. Now here's a little bit of extra information about the inner workings of everything. When we just want to print out the value, we actually don't need to store it inside of a variable. We could achieve the same result by just doing this. When our code executes, this part right here gets replaced with 15, because that's the value the method will return. Even though it's only a temporary value, because we don't store it anywhere, we can still use it in our computations, or in this case, in a simple print line statement. If I run this again, same result. Same thing up here. We actually don't need to create a specific variable. We can just return number 1 plus number 2. Again giving us the same result. There is a very important thing to keep in mind when you're returning a value. Whenever you execute a return statement, it will break out of the method and go straight back to the caller. So if we had any statements after the return statement, like a print line, this would never be able to be executed. Eclipse tells us about this as well. Unreachable code. Once this line right here is finished, we go back right to the main method and continue execution here. Sometimes this is intended behavior. Depending on the structure of your code, you may want to abort a method at a certain time. Anyway, that's all about return types for now. The next thing on our list is overloaded methods. Let's say we want to create another method which is similar to add, but this time takes in three parameters. So let's go ahead and do that. We have two different methods with the same name. How is that possible? How does our program know which method to call? Well, this is the beauty of method overloading. We can use the same name for a method as long as its signature, this part right here, is different. So when I call the method add a b, this method right here will be executed. And when I call the method add a b 15, this method will be executed. 
Now this can become pretty useful. Interestingly enough, is that when you overload a method, you can also change its return type. As long as the signature is different, you can keep the same name. So if I were to change this to a string, and we changed our return value to a string, this would work out just fine. However, only changing the return type won't work. We would get an error saying that this method is a duplicate. So whenever you overload, you have to keep in mind that the signature has to be different. Anyway, that's all the time I have for this episode. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. See you next time.